Alright, welcome back to Your Questions, My Answers, episode 37. This is segment 3, sponsored by CigarPlace.biz. And uh, it's about time that we roll into our discussion topics part of the, uh, the show. And uh, first up is the, are the pros and cons of online cigar forums. Now, this discussion topic uh, came to mind after I read uh, a very interesting article on uh, the Box Press written by Kevin. And uh, Kevin went on to, uh, to talk about uh, you know, these tinfoil hat discussions on cigar forums. Uh, in, in one instance, he talked about how uh, you'll see times when someone posts a picture of a cigar and asks whether it's mold or plume. Now, in some, some of these instances, uh, the cigar, the picture is taken with, you know, someone's camera phone. You can barely note, make out the cigar, let alone the, the buildup that's on it, whether or not it's mold or plume, and automatically people are jumping all over it. Oh, it's definitely mold, even though you really can't see anything but sort of this white, fuzzy distortion that might be on a cigar, or it could be like the table that the cigar is sitting on. And, uh, you know, this, things like this are, are kind of comical, and, and it got me to thinking, you know, well, what are some of the pros and cons of cigar forums? Uh, that example definitely being one of the cons of cigar forums. You know, some of the pros include tons and tons of information, but, you know, I'm not going to get on that, you know, right off the bat. I want to get your impression, Brian. Just thinking back to some of the cigar forums that you either visited in the past or you, you currently visit, you know, what are some of the, the good things that you see about them, and, and what are just some of the things that you you wouldn't be upset to not see or to, or to do without. Wow, there, there are cons to cigar forms? I had no idea. It never even occurred to me to think of that. Um, boy, uh, well, that's, that's a tough one. I mean, uh, uh, the, 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 the best part, honestly, of, of a cigar form, it, it's, it's kind of like a, a uh, cigar smoker's union is what it, it, it amounts to. It's, You've got all of these people all together sharing their opinions and thoughts and you know information on cigars, and it, it basically gives you as a smoker, uh, a, you know, a concerned smoker, an avid smoker, uh, a lot of you know both influence in some cases and just a lot of power of information. Um, you know, for instance, if there's a if there's just a bum smoke out there, if somebody makes a, just a horrible smoke. And uh, in there, they're trying to sell it as being some, cr you know, amazingly great cigar. A few come to mind, but I'm not going to name names. But you're not going to be fooled if you're on a, a cigar forum because people are going to post reviews. People will tell you their thoughts. You can ask them; they'll let you know. And you know, you're not you're not going to be surprised. So it, it it basically it 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 forces manufacturers to maintain a certain standard uh, because if they don't, people will discuss it and it, it'll be known. So it's. It also, uh, you know, it's a, and it's also like a, you know, a, a million pairs of eyes. Uh, another great thing about them is if there's a deal out there or something going on, you don't have time to scour every internet, you know, cigar site. You don't have time to read every article about cigars. You don't have time to uh, keep up on all the, the latest cigar bans and legislation. But, you know, you, you are aware of a certain set of that, uh, of the resources that will tell you about that. Well, you team up with you know thousands of people all over the you know you know the the U.S., Canada, the world, you know everywhere, um, and you'll get a sense of it, and it'll and the really relevant stuff will will percolate to the top. People will talk about it. You'll be aware of things that you would would have never known about before. I mean that's that new cigars, good deals, bands, uh, you know everything, just things to keep in mind. I mean. It, it's it's amazing how much stuff you find out about uh, using cigar forms. It's a tremendous source of information. Um, you know the cons. Uh, the, the cons to a cigar form is is uh, as much as they're great information. They they can be a tremendous tremendous drain in terms of time. You know, it's it's sometimes hard to keep up with all the information out there, especially on some larger ones. It just you know, you can put as much time in as you, as you want. I mean, you could. It could be a full-time job just maintaining 
are just keeping up to date on the cigar forums and what's going on. Um, that's kind of a con to it. I mean, it's a good con, but it's basically too much of a good thing. And there's also the issue of, of, as with anything, when you get enough people together, generally speaking, cigar folks, I've noticed, uh, I, say, I would think on a percentage basis, are, are, are a better quality of, of, of people that you're going to meet. They're, they're, they, they just, I don't know, I, I've never, when you, when you meet people just in random circumstances, you know, you make, meet kind of a random assortment of people. And, and, and some, you know, you meet good people and you meet, you meet some jerks. And in cigar forums, I find that you meet a lot more nice people uh, on average, I think, than, than jerks, it, it, like you would in just a normal, you walk into the mall or whatever, if you were to meet a bunch of people. And you already know you have a shared interest, it, it just, it's easier to meet people that way. But getting back to the con, the con is, is as with anything, you're going to encounter some, some assholes, you really are. Uh, jerks, I'm sorry, we'll try to keep this G-rated, well, PG at this point. Um, and you will have people who will, you know, welch out of box passes, they'll welch out of trades, they'll just be abusive, you've got trolls. And the other thing is, is, is cigar forums can kind of almost become like cigar gangs, where one forum will basically, basically beat up on another forum, both on their forum and try to come in and sabotage it. And I've seen that, and I think it's, I think that's kind of crap, you know, I mean, I understand there's different cultures in every cigar forum, and, and uh, you know what what flies in one form will definitely not fly in another. But so there there are some cons. I mean it's uh, you know there there are jerks as as with anything. I just think that there are fewer of them in a the cigar in a cigar form, and, and the, the opportunities to meet great people and the positives greatly out, outweigh the cons that I can think of. Uh, you know, what do you think, Walt? Well, you know, I, I think you're absolutely right about the the sense of community behind a cigar forum. You know there. There are a handful of people that I met, you know, online through a cigar community, and then uh, and, and then uh, a personal friendship stems from that. You know, th these are people that I've met, I've hung out with, shared a cigar or two, had a drink with them, and uh, you know, they, they become good friends and and uh, camaraderie builds, and, and it's a great thing. Uh, the thing with a cigar community or a cigar forum is that if everyone does their part in pr in producing a little bit of information regardless of how minute it is, because of the, the, the population of these forums, it's just a tremendous wealth of information. Um, you know, you get a lot of people asking questions and then you get, you know, tens of thousands of responses on, on what, the, what the cause of the problem might be or, or just the simple answer to the question. And I've spent an incredible amount of time learning from these forums and it's, it's, it's incredible how much information is there. You know, after a while, you, you're hanging around a cigar forum for a year or two. You begin to see a lot of the same questions, and, and some of the enthusiasm it begins to drain a little bit. But you know, if you stick with them, there's just uh, tons and tons of information out there that that's just sort of undiscovered. And and I really like that about cigar forums. That one of the downsides for me, which I'm beginning to see, well, I, I shouldn't say I'm beginning to see a lot lately, but I'm noticing it more and more is when the cigar forums begin to get big, uh, there's a sort of click that evolves. And um, let's say, for instance, you go to one cigar forum and uh, you ask a question about cigar brand Y. You know, it's just a generalized question. And, uh, you know, you'll get people that, that jump on and before that, you know, they don't really answer your question, they just tell you how marvelous and how beautiful this cigar is and how everyone should smoke it and you know there's sort of like this ringleader sort of uh, thing going on where you know this guy posts how great the cigar is and then you've got 10 to 20 people that jump on and tell you how great the cigar is and why you should smoke it and they never really get around to answering your question it's just uh, they stop focusing on the question and they start focusing on you know what the ringleader had to post and, you know it, it sounds negative but I don't know, in my eyes it, it is negative. It, it doesn't produce a ton of information. It's just sort of sidestepping the question and, and getting your opinion in. And you've got the same thing with uh, negative things. You know, you, you ask a question about, you know, the same cigar why on a different forum. And, you know, before you can blink your eye, someone's on there bashing the cigar, alleviating the question. And, uh, and next thing you know, there's 20 posts on why you should avoid that cigar. And they really don't address the question. So I, I think that this click mentality is is a bad thing in in some ways. In other ways, it's great. But um, 
a lot of times, you know, that's really the big downer on forums for me when, when I post a question or I see a very interesting question and then it sort of just goes off on its own tangent on why you should avoid, you know, this particular brand of cigar or that particular accessory just because, you know, the one main person doesn't, doesn't care for it. You know, and then you get all these people that sort of jump on the bandwagon and, and tell you why you shouldn't like it or you should avoid it or, or why you should love it and why you should buy it and whatnot. So, you know, there's a lot of that going on and I consider that to be a big con of cigar forums. You know, and, and, and that really only seems to be an issue when you get a very large forum with thousands of members. You know, there are some very small sort of startup cigar forums out there that, well, they've been around for a long time. There's a click mentality there. But it's tremendously different because the number is just a fraction of what these large sites are. So you get, while the, the frequency of posts isn't anywhere near as large as these bigger forums, it is just, there seems to be more information. When I go to a cigar forum, typically what I do is I click the button that says new posts. And, and, I, look, and I start reading through what's new from my last visit. And when I look through there, you know, if... I might find 10 to 20 threads that I really want to read and, and want to get into and of those 10 threads only five of them may still be on track. You know with, with a lot of these smaller forums they really don't go off track so fast. You know some of them do but for the most part they seem to be a little more focused on the issue and, and I really like that. I like, I like the smaller communities but you know you really can't beat the larger ones either. I mean they're, they're producing a ton of information and and, and they're just a great thing to have. I, I really couldn't see me learning anywhere near as much as I have without the help of, of uh, community members and, and cigar forum people and whatnot. It's, uh, I think they're a great thing, but there are definitely things that, that take away from the experience. And it, it can become a little frustrating. It can become a downer. And, but, you, you know, you, I guess the best thing to do is kind of struggle through it or soldier forward and... Uh, and, and take in as much as you can and try to just look away from the things that you don't care for so much. Or at least that's what I try to do. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> how, how did I know? Oop, train going by. How did I know that this was going to, it's, it's somewhere along the way, line we were going to get into kind of the topic of, of thread hijacking. Um, <laughs> We, see, we do see a little bit of that on, on, on our forum, but it's it's comical. Um, usually happens after the, the, the topic is, has been beaten to death considerably, but uh, yeah, you never know. Um, I don't know. It, 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 a lot of things have to do with the, uh, the, the, the forum's culture, and I think that the, the, the thing you mentioned about clicks, it, it really has to do with the culture of, the, of a given forum. Um, in, in in any situation, in, you know, you've got a group of people. The uh, the dynamics of the group is there will probably be people that that kind of rise to the top that are kind of ringleaders or leaders or whatever. And so you know, people are going to defer to them and, and they're going to follow their example. So you know that that happens in any in any situation. It, it just that what's acceptable in one is is not always acceptable in others. So I think when when picking one, you, you need to you know. You need to go in, get a feel for it, and, and you'll quickly realize if it's if it's the kind of place you want to hang out or if it's not, you know, and, and places are different. They have different policies. So. Um, but I think there are far more pros than there are cons to it. Uh, I don't I don't really have a lot more to add, and I think that uh, I, I just, I generally like them. I just wish that I had more time to spend on them. I really, I really don't, because um, there are a bunch of really great ones out there, including our own, so... Yeah, actually, the, um, the, the the cigar forums I was talking about, that actually had nothing to do with ours. Not to say that ours doesn't have its own problems. Um, but, you know, like, I'm not, I'm not going to go into, into what forums I'm, I'm experiencing sort of a lull with. But, you know, it, like, the ringleader is typically the individual with uh, thousands of posts, or he's been around the longest. doesn't necessarily mean that he has the best opinion or the best thing to say in, you know, the eye of the the eye of the beholder, but uh, it, it, there are just uh, some things that uh, that really take away from the experience for me, and uh, and, and I'm at a point now where I'm I'm still involved with with a few forums, but you know it's it's really difficult, and and I'm finding myself gravitating towards the smaller forums simply because you have a lot less of that that sort of mob mentality going on where the topic is just totally thrown off to the side, and, and a new one is created within within the thread. 
so uh, I, I don't know. I guess that was sort of a mini rant on uh, on why I'm sort of n nowhere near as active on the forums as I used to be. Which isn't to say that they're not they're not a fantastic place to be. I, I would definitely never walk away from one completely, but I, I do spend far less time on them now, just because of. Um, I don't know, my personality sort of clashes with uh, that, that sort of uh, group mentality sort of thing, I guess. But, uh, I don't know. All right, well, I think we've beaten that topic uh, to death, basically. Um, <clears throat> the next thing is uh, is actually a discussion that, that I started up on our own Stogie Review uh, fan forum, speaking of forums. Um, it's... Uh, Basically, uh, manufacturer websites. Uh, what 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 are your do? What are the do's and don'ts of manufacturer websites? What should manufacturers do with their websites? And what do you see that you're just really that really irritates you that for some reason manufacturers uh, keep you know keep doing it? It's um, what what do you think, Walt? Do you have any uh, any thoughts on stuff you see on manufacturers websites that you really like or you'd like to see, and some other stuff that you really don't like and you'd like them to stop immediately? Well, because of the fact that we do reviews and whatnot, we probably spend a lot more time on uh, manufacturers' websites than the general consumer does. So what may seem uh, like a, a minor annoyance really becomes amplified when you have to go through it, you know, say six times to, to try to track down enough information for a review. Uh, one example of one of the things that I can't stand is... Uh, going to a website only to find that half of their cigars are listed or one of their entire lines of cigars aren't listed uh, for example I, I did a review of uh, an Indian tobacco cigar it's probably been a while now uh, headed over to Rocky Patel's site because he makes it and there's a mention of Indian tobacco line because they were promoting the the 10th anniversary however there was nothing else on the entire line of cigars and you were just kind of left drawing a blank, you know, where do I get information from if the manufacturer is not even going to provide it for me? So that's one of the things I can't stand is when there's a, when there's a popular product or an entire line or, or whatever the case may be, or a new cigar or, or an old cigar that's still in production that isn't listed, but, you know, a handful of others are. It's very frustrating. Uh, there are sites such as uh, Illusion and Davidoff, which do a really good job of laying out their cigars showing you the different sizes, giving you a picture, giving you a little breakdown of of what the intention was for each size and, and how it differs from the rest. And Illusion does a very good job of that. Actually, I, I to be honest with you, of all the manufacturers' websites I've been on, I think Illusion's is probably my favorite as far as descriptive information, pictures of the cigars, and uh, and just the, the general layout of the site as a whole. Uh, Another thing I can't stand is uh, the, the flash in the music. I mean, really, do I have to listen to some, uh, some manufacturer doing a song and dance about his brand every time I go to the website? It's really annoying. And uh, it's even more annoying when I'm trying to work and I've got a little bit of music playing on the computer to, to just as background music, sort of. And then all of a sudden, my music is interrupted with, you know, this crazy Dominican dance song or, or something like that. It's it's really annoying and then every time you click rather than continue playing the song you go to another area of the site and the same song starts over that drives me nuts you know if if you're going to do a website as a manufacturer please i understand that you know you really want to capture people's attention and the music may sound like a great idea but for the people that are going on there more than once to see one thing it's really annoying and it really takes away from your website uh, and, and I think the best thing you can do is showcase your entire line, give us lots of information on your cigars. Or, you know, don't even, you don't have to give us lots of information, just give us in, some information on all of your cigars, rather than leaving an entire brand completely off the map. Just, uh, just give us information and make it easy to find. Don't bury it under lots of flash and, and fancy moving objects and whatnot. It's so, uh, that's all I've got. Brian, I know you started the topic, and, and there's probably a... You've got the bug to unleash the fury on uh, on a couple of manufacturers, so go right ahead. Well, I, I don't know that I'm going to beat on anybody specifically. Um, though I got to say, when you mentioned the Rocky Patel thing, um, it, his site has changed a number of times, and there was 
there's there's been a I actually hadn't even seen the the most recent change until I posted this and somebody mentioned it and uh, yeah it, it the the automatic video the automatic the, the automatic audio um, I, I get it's annoying it really is it, you know everything's starting out I, I in general just wish that they would they would drift away from this flash stuff I, I, it could be because they're trying to protect you know audio and video and, and images that they're they're doing that so you don't you don't steal them which you know it makes it harder to steal them if they're embedded in flash but um, yeah it's it's incredibly annoying and a lot of times I'll be uh, I'll go I'll go to one of these websites. I won't have music playing, but I'll have my speakers turned up because I don't know. I mean, I was doing something else that I needed to hear some audio on, and all of a sudden, boom! Loud, you know, incredibly loud, festive Cuban music plays. It startles the crap out of me, and it annoys the crap out of me. Um, you know, the, the of of all the bad stuff about Flash, the worst part of it is is the embedded sounds. We really don't need to hear stuff. Uh, you know, if you want it there, my thought is cool. But what you need to do is have it. You need to have it paused or turned off by by default, and let people turn it on if they want to hear it. You know, let if they want to, you can check out your site and hear some some good uh, some good Cuban music or you know Dominican or wherever it's from. If they want to hear uh, one of us, the Social Club, while they're looking at your uh, <laughs> at your website, let them turn it on. If they want to see you do a video, you know, a spiel about your cigars, which I think is cool, let them turn it on. Let them, you know, give them an opportunity to say, "Oh yeah, I want to see what uh, I want to see what Rocky has to say about this." But playing it by default, it's it it it's a bandwidth hog. It you know it it just it distracts you. It gets in the way. You know, anything that slows down the loading of a website, I think, is kind of a bad thing. And I, I spend a lot of time working on websites. The other thing, it's related to Flash. And but it, it it extends beyond Flash. It's just strange navigation. Uh, I I'm getting irritated by websites. They these these manufacturers they spend good money to have, you know, clever design team put together a website. But in some cases it looks like what they've done is they've let they what they're doing is they're allowing the their design team to showcase their crazy, you know, designing skills. You know, they, they all these neat things they can do, and they do that at the expense of actual usability of the site. Like, uh, I know one website, I, I can't remember who does it, where you have to, like, you have to hover over a cigar, you have to click a cigar, it has to roll around before you can see information on it. And, like, I didn't even know that's how, what you needed to do. It's not obvious. It's hard to find it. So, the, in that case, the information's there. I don't know how to get to it because I don't fucking know how to, sorry. I don't, I don't have any idea how the hell to, you know, to get to it because it's using some strange non-standard navigation. Um, you know, it's just, it's weird, and it, it couple that with, you know, sound effects when you, you know, loud sound effects when you hover over stuff, it can, it can get really annoying. Um, I, I gotta agree with Walt, every website, you know, you need to show everything you're currently making at the very least, um, and give us some information on it. Um, I understand you might not sh want to break down the exact composition of the cigar to try to protect the blend, but, I mean, it's not too much, I don't think, to add, to, to mention... You know, where it's made, filler, wrapper, binder, all that stuff, you know, give a, a breakdown of, of the countries involved. You know, that's, that, a, a decent picture of it, that's not, I don't think that's too much to ask, and I think that's really what people are looking for. Um, yeah, it's just, I, I think we've <laughs> turned this, I, I guess there's some do's in there, I think there's a lot more don'ts, um, kind of becoming more negative on it, but uh, it just, I, I appreciate that they're that they're there. I really like that uh, manufacturers are you know embracing the internet and bringing this information to us. I just I want them to do it in a way that's more useful for us. Um, make it easier for us to get to that information. You know, have all your current lines. If you know, if if a line is out of production but there's still cigars out there, consider setting up a uh, a little bit more remote kind of an archive section that has information about older smokes. There are people out there who collect your older cigars. There are people who sit on them, who age them, and who may not have a cigar cyclopedia, a current one or an old one that has information on it. So they're going to go looking for information about it when they're discussing it, or they just want to be reminded what it is that they have. So, I mean, we need, you know, that information needs to be there. In, in the end say of things, it really helps out the manufacturer just as much as it helps out the consumer. So uh, that's, that's kind of my rant on it. Uh, did you have anything else you wanted to add, Walt? 
No, I think we're good on that one. Let's <laughs> let's uh, let let that one go. Uh, because I I think if I add anything to it, it's just going to be more negativity on on different things. I like I would not like to see rather than uh, some positive things. All right. So uh, last week, Jerry and I, or two weeks ago, whatever whatever it is now, Jerry and I talked about uh, cigar magazines. So uh, staying on a similar subject, let's. Let's talk catalogs. Uh, you know, Brian, who do you think puts out a decent mail out, mail order catalog? Is there any that you just can't stand reading, but yet they keep coming every month? Mm, that's 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 a tough one because honestly, I I think of all catalogs as being basically cigar porn, and I I like I like paging through them. I I don't know that I've ever bought from a catalog. I always I either go to a brick and mortar or I. Uh, I go and hit, hit a website and buy, so I don't really dislike any of them. Um, I, I kind of like paging through them to see what they've got. Um, I've got this uh, one that, that, that keeps coming that has just the most random stuff that I've never seen before uh, anywhere else, and it could be because they make them. I think it's uh, Fink or something like that. I picked that up somewhere along the way. I, I don't think I've ever ordered from them. I've had some of their smokes. I've actually found some of these unusual smokes in... Uh, in brick and mortars around the area, usually, in, I hate to say it, but you know, in bargain bins, saying you know, not to not to diss on the company or anything like that, but uh, oh God, what was it? One of them was like an HB house blend, some sort of pre embargo Cuban thing. I actually found one and smoked it, and it was, eh, you know, it was all right. Um, I, it, it <laughs> um, but I'm getting away from the issue. I I don't. The, the only one that borders on being annoying at times is Cigar uh, Cigars International because it seems like I get a catalog from them every two weeks or something like that. It's a different one, and I kind of I'm not uh, you know I kind of laugh. I made fun of uh, a little bit of, of Rocky you know on, on the one where he's hanging from the thing like a monkey and you know pictures of. Uh, 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 What's his name? Kizad and Sosha, uh, the the guy that's Gurkha, somewhere in the middle of it, getting mad and tearing up the magazine. I find that it, it's kind of funny, but it's kind of cheesy at the same time. The I just get a, the volume of those I get is is a little crazy. Um, aside from that, I don't really have any beefs with catalogs. Um, I don't really have a particular favorite. I just I like paging through them. I like looking at the cigars and you know seeing what's out there. You know, sometimes I look at the price to get an idea of what things are going for. But I mean, I just you know, it's kind of like looking through a, a I don't know, cigar photo album or something like that to me, basically. What do you think, Walt? Well, I I like the uh, the Cigars International catalog. I think it's got sort of like a wacky sense of humor. You know, it's it's a fun read. It, you know, you get a little bit of a laugh out of it. Uh, they do come pretty frequently, and uh, they end up they end up in a big pile before I end up junking them all. But, uh, you know, they're, they're fairly entertaining to read. Um, you know, I, I don't think... No, I don't get the famous catalog here. I used to. Uh, that wasn't a bad read. I used to really like the, the Holtz catalog. Everything was sort of presented with this kind of elegance to it, and uh, it, it was just... Uh, I, I liked the way it was written, and, and the articles were nice. And, you know, it's not like there was a big article covering different things, but just the... Uh, the presentation of the brands I thought was very elegant and and, and fun to read. Uh, the JR catalog is the one I've got a little bit of a beef with. You know, it, Lou Lou Rothman ends up putting uh, sort of a story in his catalog, and I, I think they're very entertaining. They're they're a good read. It's it's like getting a magazine for free. You know, there's just some interesting information about different brands and how he he views the different brands and whatnot. And uh, you know, I like reading them. I, I really preferred the old catalog, the, you know, the, the one that was really small. I got this one two days ago. This is like the Atlas size JR cigar catalog. It is enormous. I mean, when you open it up, you feel like you're opening up a newspaper on a Sunday morning. You know, it's it's enormous. I, I the nice that you'd probably love this in uh, in the sense of uh, cigar porn because it looks like all the cigars are represented full size. So when you know, you're looking at, I just passed. Let's see if I can find. It. Yeah, when you're looking at the CAO ad, it, it appears as though you're looking at everything full size, and that's great. But man, you need really—they really need to tone down the size of the catalog. It just—it's enormous. 
Anyway, that's that and stuff in my catalogs that fall out into my lap for you know in this set in this case uh, statehood 48 set of coins I, I really don't need that in my cigar catalog so uh, they don't need to be there but but for the most part you know I like reading the catalogs there's a lot of inf interesting information in there and actually there's some information that uh, that I, that I've absorbed and used in some of the reviews that where some of the brand information comes from but um, yeah lately this this catalog from JR is just way too big. It, it's great in the sense that everything's represented he, really big and and, they, and the cigars look great, but it, it ends up being too big to be practical, at least for me. That's, so that's my my only complaint was I really like the small JR catalogs much better than the new ginormous one. Yeah, you're right. I, I would love to get my hands on that massive one, and I I, do, I think I do get JRs, so I'm I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing that. I, I find myself looking through, you know, I get bored and I'll, I'll see whatever catalog's laying around and I'll go through and I'll flip through it and you read the descriptions or see what, what new ones are out there. Um, that's how I found out about the, uh, the Perdomo in, in Menso that, uh, <laughs> that I reviewed, uh, I think last Halloween, it just a freakishly large smoke um, with the, the, the crazy, the crazy scary lady on it. I thought that was pretty funny. So. Yeah, I look through it for crazy stuff like that. Yeah, I, I would love to. I'd love to get my hands on that. I keep thinking that I'll, I'm going to do something with the, the catalogs, cut them up, and make them into some sort of cigar collage or some sort of art or something like that. Um, I don't know if that'll ever happen. My wife gets mad that I they uh, they keep hanging out, so I, I need to go back through and, and do whatever I'm going to do with them and toss them. But I, I like them. I, I genuinely like them. Um, I'm not sure if I've got any of the Holtz ones. I've seen a few that, that, that do have a very classy presentation. I really do kind of enjoy, you know, larger, glossier, uh, you know, pages. And, you know, it, it, it's, I, I think they're great. I think they're interesting. They're fun to look at. Um, I, I think their, their catalogs are definitely doing the trick with me because they, they really are, you know, get, keeping me thinking about cigars and looking at stuff I haven't tried or, you know, stuff I haven't had in a while or just stuff that's interesting to you know smoke again so I you know it's a great idea I, I agree with the uh, the little things that that drop out you know the coins I see that too and I, I throw that out I get that and you know when I order stuff online from some some places they throw this junk in there I can I can buy these incredibly collectible coins so you know they're guaranteed to go up in value they're collector's items they're amazing you know the small set made by some mint company and the legal currency, but you can't spend them or some some garbage like that. And I'm like, what what are you sending that crap to me for? I mean, what is this Reader's Digest? No, this is this is a cigar catalog. I I I'm into cigars. I'm not into collectible plates and garbage. So that that does kind of annoy me a little bit. Not too much because it gets it goes it gets thrown out right away. I mean, I I don't sit around and look at that again. That's gone. So, um, <laughs> but. Uh, well, you know, the, those, those things that sort of fall out, um, you know, I don't remember what credit card it was before I, I canceled it, but uh, every statement they used to send me like a book of stuff, of advertisements, and I used to put them, I used to put them back in the envelope that I sent my payment with, and uh, I'd mail them right back. And they never stopped, you know, they're, they're obviously not going to stop for one person, but I, I get a little joy out of thinking that the, the person in the billing department got the same frustration that I did when they came. That's just devious. I've I've heard of that, uh, where where you get uh, <laughs> you get junk that you don't want, and they've got a postage paid envelope to send whatever back to them. You know, I've heard people just stuffing it all back in. I, I like the idea. I've heard of, and I've thought of, about doing, and I I think I've done it once or twice. Where you either tear up or you shred the uh, <laughs> the thing you stuff it back in the envelope and put it in the mail. I think I I think one time, and I did it. You know. It's not it's too much effort to do, I think, all the time. But I, I went and, I went to my sh uh, sh cross-cut shredder bin and, and just grabbed a, a huge handful of, of garbage and put it back in there. I thought, you know, if they're going to send me this garbage, I'm going to send them something back and cost them some <laughs> some postage for doing it. I I know in the end that you know the people that are going to wind up paying for that are the, or whoever you know buy the product or whatever. But it was funny to do. I laughed. I had a good laugh putting it in the, the the mailbox and I don't know I don't know if anything ever came of it probably not but 
Well, you know, I, I think, Brian, that about does it for uh, for this episode of the show. You know, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. I hope uh, Jerry's having a great time in Vegas. Actually, he hasn't left yet. He leaves uh, tomorrow, and uh, he's there for a few days for work. I told him that uh, he better go to uh, Casa Fuente and have a, a Casa Fuente for me and, and maybe a mojito. So uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, to uh, some Casa Fuente stories when he gets back. He was also supposed to, uh, to meet up with Justin from uh, Las Vegas TV. So, uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to some cigar-related stories when he gets back. Maybe we'll uh, try to incorporate that into the next show. Uh, and that is in case we, and, and that is unless we forget about it, uh, which, which happens quite a bit. Um, I think uh, I don't take such, uh, such great notes when it comes to uh, things to talk about later. They, they all end up sitting in a pile next to my computer because I like to take hand notes and it's a mess. But that's uh, just a little bit more on my quirky personality. So uh, why don't you take us on out? And on the note of uh, Walt's quirky personality, um, I'd like to thank you for watching. And uh, uh, basically, uh, if you've got a, a question that you would like to get into the YQMA, you can uh, leave a voicemail uh, uh, using uh, wwhite72082 on Skype or calling 610 Five seven two two six uh, three six uh, to put your uh, to put your questions in. Of course, you can you know go on the forum too, which uh, we're we're on there a lot and uh, ask your questions there. A lot of the you know a, a fair amount of the stuff for this episode came from the forum. Um, you know the feedback form, everything else. Um, of course, thanks to our sponsors, uh, Jameson. Uh, I forgot what the other ones were. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, we mentioned them earlier. Uh, thanks to them for, uh, for sponsoring us and helping us do what we do. Um, and we'll, we'll see you here uh, again next time. Uh, until then, long ashes.